If you're newly diagnosed with MS, you've probably heard the term escalation thrown about, but what does this mean? Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to stay up to date with our MS content. What exactly does escalation or modification mean and how are exactly they different from IRTs? I mean, there's all these terms that get put around. At the end of the day, what we're talking about is disease modifying treatment. So when we uh, prescribe therapies to multiple sclerosis, we either use disease modifying treatments or symptomatic treatments to treat symptoms. And disease modifying therapies are the things that change the so-called natural history of the disease. They stop you becoming disabled. They stop you having relapses. They stop your brain shrinking quicker than it should be. They stop new lesions on MRI. In other words, they're modifying what we think is the MS disease process. In the disease modifying therapy category, we have this classification system where we divide them up into what I would call maintenance treatments. These have to be given continuously versus mm. uh, what you call IRTs, immune reconstitution therapies. These are usually given as short courses. So you usually have a therapy that's given for a few days. They basically deplete your immune system and allow it to recover. And they're given intermittently. Okay. And often you can get away with just having one or two courses and then hopefully you go into long term remission. Whereas the maintenance treatments, okay, are the ones given continuously and you've got to continue taking them indefinitely. And if you stop those treatments, your MS tends to come back and that's why they're given continuously. And so when you talk about escalation, we're talking about the maintenance treatments. We divide those up into, you know, categories. There's a tiering system. Uh, we have what's so-called platforms that tend to be less effective. They're the ones given usually in, uh, first line. And if you if you don't respond to them, in other words, if you start having ongoing relapses or, you know, or your MRI is active, we then escalate you to a more effective therapy. And that's what we mean by escalation is going from a less effective therapy on average to a more effective. And we call that escalation. So what exactly are the factors that a neurologist may take into consideration before starting someone on escalation therapy? And I'm glad you asked that question because people think we can have like an algorithm that will choose the drug for somebody, but it doesn't work like that because I'm looking at you and you're a young woman. So you may want to have a family or extend your family. And some of the treatments that are escalation treatments just cannot be given to women who want to fall pregnant because they affect the baby, they affect the, you know, the development of the baby. One of the most important factors is those kind of things, you know, family planning. Um, the other one may be adherence. Some people just don't like taking tablets, for example, and they forget to take a daily tablet, and maybe they're better off having a six-monthly infusion therapy. So this is why um, there are no definitive rules. You have to take all this information into account when making a decision. There's so much choice. How, how exactly would you advise a, a patient with multiple sclerosis to to know if they're making the best decision for them. This is why we need education, 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 because, and a lot of the time you're relying on your healthcare professional, your neurologist, or maybe your MS nurse practitioner to make that decision. You're trusting in them making the best decision for you given their, their experience. It doesn't always work like that because sometimes um, we need to give people the most effective therapies from the, from the get-go. And the reason for that is, is because they've probably got a very poor prognostic profile. You may have a very high lesion load. You have lots of active lesions. And you like say, well, actually, this particular individual is going to do badly unless we get on top of the MS from the get-go. And in that situation, you wouldn't want to do an escalation. You want to give them the top therapy straight away. And that's the term we call flipping the pyramid, where we give the most effective therapies first line. And so that decision-making really base, is based on uh, prognostic profiling. Would you consider that all treatments within this category are equal? No, I, I wouldn't. <clears throat> and the reason is depending what your treatment target is. You know, when we had the first therapies out, we were satisfied with reducing the attack rate, the relapse rate, by a third or a half. And that was happened with interferons and, and, and people were expected to have relapses still and they were still on the treatment. Then we decided actually we want to make people relapse free. And then we said, okay, let's treat to no evident disease activity, not only relapses, but let's stop new lesions coming on MRI scan. So you as a person with MS, you probably would have had a re-baseline scan. And then every year you have a scan and we compare the previous scan with the current one. And if you have new lesions, we would say, well, that treatment is not really working. We need to shift you to a more effective one. And we call that treatment target no evident disease activity. So no relapses and no new lesions on scan. Remember, you have a choice when it comes to your treatment.
there are so many options, but that gives you the ability to be more proactive in managing your treatment. Escalation therapy starts with the most mild treatments, only increasing in efficacy as the condition progresses. I hope you found that video useful. You can find more MS content on our channel or click the link to watch the next MS video.